Now we are going to talk about another very important portion of um, chapter 13 VAR models. We are going to start our application and see how VAR models work out. The first problem is time series properties of macroeconomic variables where we have um, data files for monthly macroeconomic data for US, well, we have interest rate, uh, log of money, uh, logarithm of money, logarithm of prices, logarithm of output. We want to plot the variables and interpret their time series properties. We want to do the plotting again for first difference variables. We want to do the plotting again for 12 difference variables and we want to use a filter proposed by SIMS. Uh, you and do first difference variables and compute a, a CF and PSF. This might not be that important. However, um, we'll still cover this. The name of the program is STSM properties. So let us just find STSM properties. There's a lot of pressure on the RAM right now that's why it's a bit slow mm, MATLAB is not responding this is very tiresome yeah it's coming up so STSM properties Basically, MATLAB takes a lot of space in RAM compared to R. R is much simpler and light. However, we cannot at all uh, discard the benefits of using MATLAB, especially for VAR type of analysis. So, STSM properties. First of all, we need to always check if there are any local functions. No. Yeah, there is a local function. So basically, the, this time because we are going to create a function for autocorrel um, partial autocorrelation and autocorrelation, which are ACF and PSCF function. So we create a function for partial autocorrelation where inputs are the variable itself and the lags. So first we store up until the number of lags uh, in one column. So zeros are created for lags. T is the length of the variable. For i equals 1 to lags trim. So yt minus uh, y, yi0. So yt minus 1 x t minus 1 x is 1 t minus 1 to 1 and y 0 i that is something we all of us uh, are quite aware of right so y t minus y t minus 1 very simple and this is x t minus 1 in terms of uh, acf and pscf so basically acf is uh, regressed upon constant we know from uh, theory page 2 SF is regressed upon uh, regression of yt on constant and yt minus k so instead of k we can talk about i yt minus y so SF is uh, regressed upon constant and yt minus i so x transpose x inverse multiplied x transpose so x y, we know x y divided by x square so this is the OLS and autocorrelation is saved in B2. <coughs> autocorrelation for all the elements is saved in B2 and that is um, what the function is. Partial autocorrelation function on the other hand is regression of yt on the constant y and yt minus 1, yt minus 2 up until yt minus k. So partial autocorrelation, zeros um, la uh, up to lags to store the data t length of y x ones. 
So again to store excess T rows one column. So y two minus one x uh, trimmer x one zero trimmer y zero i. So this is the difference, right? Why is the difference? Because in PSCF the regression happens in SCF the regression of yt happens on constant and yt minus 1. That's all. Constant and the yt minus 1. On the other hand, in PSCF regression happens upon the constant, then the regression of yt happens on yt minus 1, then yt minus 2 up until yt minus k. So in SCF we regress yt on constant and yt minus k. In PSCF we regress yt on constant then yt minus 1 then yt minus 2 up until yt minus k. So xt minus 1 okay because this is going recursively so instead of taking the constant only we have to take xt minus x10 xt minus 1 then up until everything else remains same this is the turning point in PSCF and uh, we create that up with once up until so basically once is there the size is determined this was t minus 1 i because it was uh, x t minus 1 but this is going in steps so basically it's the same thing basically we can represent the same thing it's kind of like the same thing yeah uh, so i plus 1 so here is the turning cha changing point I'm sorry p core so a core was only b2 but b core will continue to happen for i plus 1 times but this one trimmer x1 0 and once t minus i1 is the same thing because we are already doing once for x already stored once in x then we did trimmer x10 they are the same thing okay in r we do remove object uh, all true is all true list equals is all the listed uh, for for all the listed uh, variables we remove them then graphics off we download the helper function for figure trimmer etc etc the what are we doing here where are the functions yeah then uh, okay here the functions are defined then variables are defined here we also define the variables but before that we we do a variable called compute var compute scf and pscf you see y is equal to the variables and acf y1 lags pscf y1 very simple that is what is repeated here function we are creating a function with y lags and we want to do plot of that a do plot is a function so we want to include that as well right so in acf1 we do y1 lags and do plot for acf pscf i mean these are all we stored in acf why i think there is a writing error acf and pscf it will go on like that anyway So this is represented, representing this, basically SF and PSF for the given variables, level of, levels of variables, then time series properties. We read our data as matrix. This is very important that we read our table as matrix because um, in VAR matrix calculation is what we do mostly we read our data we use six lags that we mention here we compute SF PSCF levels uh, on levels of variables by 
first we columbine them then we compute var we call this function compute var with y lags and there you go this is computed hmm. this is also because we created scf and psf function right wow this is quite great because um the whole thing is created in one function we didn't have to create a safe and psa function very shortcut in r hmm. otherwise r has a safe and psa function created in it and we are calling it already yeah and we are storing them as a, in ACF column pretty cheeky good okay um, then we compute already computed the vars then this is nothing how you represent uh, your row names how you represent your column names how do you want the system to show your table it is much easier in Mat uh, MATLAB that okay for lags you show this in Y1 you show SF1 in Y2 you show SF2 Y3 you show SF3 Y4 you show SF4 we combine sequence of lags and T minus 1 we do T minus 1 we remove <coughs> the first row or the last row I think this is the last row list row names and column names are listed dimension names and also print table results the all so matrix number of column length of length of column names that is the number of columns uh, row names is we are gonna repeat lags lag up until lags right so sequence of lags very good PSCF is also in the same way sequence of lags columns number of co the column size will be the number of column names and number of rows list is row names and column names and blah 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 we print that Now, for f on first difference of data, why not y y t minus y t minus one and dy use the dy function jointly do all the var calculation. You don't have to manually do it like MATLAB. You see, what they are doing is dy take the first column, SA run y lags y lags y is the first column y is the second column the first step to third column uh, jointly done okay second difference is again you just change it 12 0 0 12 again compute var represent the result in this manner and then show the plots that's all so you didn't have to the main uh, advantage in R in this particular program is we actually never had to draw the function we had never had to write down the function for SF and PSF given the fact that these are already included inside the function so we just called the function and stored the results in SF column that's all that's all actually hmm. so this is STSM property is done which was quite simple uh, but not an essential coding now we're gonna move into the next problem from this particular the previous particular problem our take is that simply uh, in ACF the regression of y happens on yt minus k 
but the regression of y for PSCF happens on yt minus uh, uh, 1 to yt minus k obviously everyone has reg is regressed on constant so in both the loops you see uh, if for ACF the we just take the second element b2 which is fixed beta 2 but for PSCF we have many elements so for each i we add that with plus one because um, PSF is not only regressed on uh, re is regression of yt on yt minus k it is regression of yt uh, starting from yt minus one to yt minus k so that will be a series PSF ACF might not be a series that's our take from the first problem the second problem Simulating an ARMA model, consider the ARMA 2 2 model, beautiful, in which I, uh, VT is IAD, uh, the structural residual of the disturbance vector is ID with zero mean and sigma square variance. We want to simulate the model for t equals 200 observation using the given parameters here and to initialize. So generally, when we do 200 observation we generally do 300 so that we can discard the first 100 to remove the initialization effect or the values initial values effect on our estimation so initialization problem this is called initialization problem so estimate ACF and PSF blah 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 okay so the problem is STSM simulate <coughs> So here we need to do a simulation but before that as always we need to check the local functions. Again here the local functions are ACF and PACF just like before no change in the ACF and PACF codes okay. I'll wait here for a while where inputs are y and lags we store zeros for autocorrelation PACF we also store uh, ones in X and then you know yt minus 1 xt minus 1 the regression yt minus 1 xt minus 1 the regression for b2 i plus 1 okay and here we'll just call we don't need to you know uh, do anything else uh, okay so we create a function called simulate we create a function called simulate and uh, set seed 12 kind marsana twister and uh, t is equal to 200 lags is 10 10 lags 200 we need to generate first error sexual error is square root of 0.1 uh, into random number of t plus 101 rows one column square root of 0.1 is coming from our question which is 0.1 for the variance so residual variance so we just take the square root 0.1 that is multiplied to t plus 101 rows one column so why 101 rows why not 100 because our uh, we always need to discard one we, because we are taking lags so we always need to discard one and besides our problem is our matutu model so 101 rows one column so start with arma 00 we have mu 51 given to us then we estimate, uh, uh, create the model yt rexrr we talked about rexrr before rexrr is the function that creates a recursive series a series based on recursion okay so mu uh, then the equation is given which is mu plus um, phi 1 
y t minus 1 mu plus phi 1 y t minus 1 uh, uh, plus phi 2 uh, sorry the equation is phi 1 y t minus 1 psi 1 v t minus 1 phi 2 y t minus 2 psi 2 v t minus 2 v t so is psi 1 uh, ut minus 2 3 mod ut 2 0 is um, yt minus 2 because phi 1 is 0 phi 2 is 0 psi 1 is 0 psi 2 is 0 all are 0 actually anyway and uh, what we are doing here is that we are doing recursive we are running the function rexorder and Rexorder has what? I think let's open the file Rexorder and we'll understand what goes inside the function. Let us wait for the good stuff. So this is this is the XRR function where X is matrix of dimension uh, Y naught is a matrix of dimension uh, X is matrix of dimension n by k Y naught is matrix uh, matrix of dimension for the uh, phi's for the autocorrelation A is matrix of dimension rho by k so n by k rho by k rho by k right so this is how it goes on recursive estimation. Uh, row uh, C A1 equals 3, A2 equals 2, A1, 2, 3, plus 5, A row minus 1, kind of like that, right? So, <coughs> this is how basically the uh, Rexorer function continues. Um, in general, you need to understand that X is N by K y naught and a are rho by k and inputs are x y naught and a y naught is the initialization initial y dependent variable which are rows which are coming from autoregressive parameter so phi uh, initial phi values x is initial values of x and a is a right so initial y naught a is autoregressive parameter i'm sorry this is autoregressive parameter and this is initial value okay so here what is happening that is xrr exogenous variable starting values lag parameters exogenous variable starting values and lag parameters so we were talking about stsm simulate so exogenous variable starting value so exogenous variable is mu um, for this problem we have mu uh, plus trimmer ut to zero psi one trimmer ut uh, okay t11 ut zero two basically what is happening here exogenous variable we are taking whole moving average parameter here ut20 ut11 ut02 okay ut20 ut11 ut02 plus constant mu uh, exogenous variable this is we are considering as exogenous the moving average parameter initial values y's which are zeros given to us initial values for y is zero uh, why not uh, and we have autoregressive parameters phi 1 and phi 2 very simple so column bind is the moving average parameter vt basically by ut where i'm talking about vt here two zero one one zero two so vt vt minus one vt minus two 
Vt, Vt minus 1 for psi 1, Vt minus 1, psi 2, Vt minus 2. <coughs> Making sure that the dimensions are the same. So, columbine this. Then we are doing columbine on. So, this is one column, this is second column. Um, 0, 0 and columbine. So, all of them are in columns. Columbine C phi 1, phi 2, and then we run Rex RR function on them. Y not T stream R Y T hundred zero. So Y T minus Y T minus one. So this is Y T and this is Y not T Y zero T. And A C F E is Y not T. We use Y T and remove the first hundred. So A C F E is Y not T and lags. P C F E is Y not T and lags. Very simple. That is Arma zero zero. Now arma one zero is we have one autoregressive parameter. However, that doesn't make any change to our actual code. That remains the same. However, our R function on ACF has plot false or true, whatever, and the data is stored in ACF. Always remember the ACF column: compute ACF, compute PCF. R120. So very simple. We are just calling the XRR function. Exogenous variable initial value. Um, and so exogenous variable starting value and lag parameters. Lag parameters. So R20. We are uh, simulating YT. In all cases, we are simulating SF and PSF. That's all. Basically, that is all that is in this. Um, code so we will move on to the next one the next problem is it's quite easy right we just need to call the extra function for yt our take is first generate ut and use ut to call the extra function on yt it will simulate so as you have simulated ut YT is automatically dependent on the simulation of UT, so it is automatically being simulated in every step. Every time you call for XRF function, that's all. <laughs> Stationary properties of macroeconomic variables. The data file contains monthly macroeconomic data for the United States from January 1959 to <coughs> 1998. Estimate an AR4 model for the interest rate and determine if the process is stationary by computing the roots of the polynomials. So you can use the roots function or you can use the poly eigen function. We already know roots should be greater than one for the process to be stationary, or the poly eigen should give us the less than one, or phi one should be less than one. The determinant of phi one should be less than one for stationary to have unit root. Estimate an um, AR2 model for annual percentage growth rate in output. Percentage growth rate and determining the process is stationary by con computing the roots of the polynomial. So this is IR4, this is IR2 model. A level, estimate a VAR2 containing a constant and annual percentage growth rate of money, the annual percentage inflation rate. So first, a non VAR, just an R model, then a VAR2. 1 minus 5 1 z or 2 z is uh, 0. So constant, interest rate, annual growth, percentage, growth, all the variables basically. And then do it for a var 4. This is an unnecessarily big task. We'll do it. It's gonna be quite easy. STSM roots. STSM roots. As long as we know the basic principle. always look for a local function no local function is even much easier than we think so we're gonna load our function define the variables isn't it yeah and then create a dummy variable 
as well there are dummy variables in our excel file we stored them in 7 to 17 read our data as a matrix by definition MATLAB reads it in matrix by R we need to mention that with as matrix or as factor is a beautiful and easy representation as matrix read table sims data your dad and then read all of them right and then construct the variables y var is equal to r lm lpl not and for x uh, for lag we have trimar y var 12 0 basically we need to remember for interest rate we do not uh, calculate annual percentage growth rate but for everyone else we uh, calculate annual percentage growth rate so we convert our data to annual percentage growth rate so taking the difference lag difference 12 0 0 12 so we're doing column bind here isn't it yes and then we are computing the roots of air for model <sighs> for the interest rate so we didn't find the annual percentage growth rate we didn't do that that is a mistake I guess but however it's fine to pr for us to proceed so compute the roots first y equals r thinking that this is r then x is column uh, ones because we are talking about AR4 model length of y minus 4 1 3 more y3 1 y2 2 y1 3 y0 4 4 variables y31 y22 y13 y04 this is quite nice right to re remember the stuff so replicate a uh, column binder replicate one length of y uh, so once length of y minus 4 replicate one for length of y minus 4 3 more y31 y22 y13 y04 same thing so replicate function we use the replicate function instead of once then we do um, OLS which is X is streamer Y40 which is uh, theta is X streamer Y40 so everything basically everything taken together divided by y40 y04 is an answer so linear model of dreamer y40 regressed on x minus 1 coefficient is the variable uh, where it is stored so c is column binding theta minus 5 theta minus theta 4 theta 3 theta 2 theta so minus theta 2 minus theta 3 minus theta 4 minus theta 5 we have the thetas hmm minus theta 5 minus theta 4 <coughs> okay there is the theta right the regression equation so take the second element first one then second third fourth fifth and we do roots we find the roots of c the equation uh, this is our polynomial equation we find the roots with our roots function only in R the function is known as poly root and in MATLAB is roots and we need to see if this is stationary 
or not jointly if the roots are 1 or 0 just that compute the roots of your 4 model for the interest rate y is equal to r we are just in we are just taking the interest rate data y equals r and then we find the roots of r good we print columbine roots absolute roots here to model for real output growth so this is the difference that we take and then again y11 y minus 21 the because it's our two model y minus 21 y11 y02 regressed on y20 regressed on it coefficient so regression is happening theta minus taking the elements we create the column and again we do the roots the same thing is for output now let's look into var model is there anything else in the var model nothing new in the var model basically this time we have y var that's all and uh, the var is created with multiple variables everything else remains exactly the same everything else remains exactly the same just the input changes now mu phi 1 phi 2 Okay, in var we need to specify mu phi 1 and phi 2. Where is mu located in our var? We have four mu's. We have two phi 1. Uh, phi 1 is located in theta column 1. No, row 1 column 2 row 3 no 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 what am i doing i'm sorry uh brain um kind of like in a static situation right now trim r mu is when we trim uh so we take the theta here mu is our constant and we co trim the last four the rest is mu so you have last four trimmed for phi 1 from theta you take the first out and the last two out rest is phi 1 uh, phi 2 is you take the first three out and no, nothing from the end is a phi 2 right so are trimming the last four rest is mu hmm. can we run up to this let's see if it works i'm not sure if it will work however let us see there is no bad in knowing okay so how this program is going is very simple actually um basically when we before doing roots Uh, when we are doing this like uh, theta when we were estimating our theta here and uh, see r4 model is starting with ones y31 y22 y13 you might ask a question that why the structure looks like this before the regression we need to remember our autoregressive equation which is 1 minus 51z 52z square 53z cube minus 54z4 so ones then these stream functions are coming and they are regressed very simple see following this equation now about the roots mu 
our column looks like this because as I said everything is expressed in index everything is stored in index so after we done estimating our theta it looks like this because it's a bar 2 model mu that uh, 5111 5112 this is lag uh, uh, I mean uh, lag variable and equation right so what was the thing mm, uh, lag equation and variable lag equation variable so lag 1 equation 1 variable 1 lag 1 equation 1 variable 2 lag 2 equation 1 variable 1 lag 2 equation 1 variable 2 so you have how many phi 1 2 phi 1 you have how many phi 2 2 phi 2 right for each constant so mu is the first one you trim the rest from your theta this is your theta estimation this is your theta parameters that you are estimating uh, e from for one one particular variable just one variable you have these four five parameters you are estimating so then you trim the one and the last two and you get the in between that is five ones and then the last two are five twos that is what is mentioned in both your r and your uh, matlab program right so where is the var for var actually that is specifically for var so you see for var uh, 2 that is what how we specify this and we do poly eigen and when we do poly eigen how does your equation looks like uh, when we are doing poly eigen running poly eigen function um, one minus one divided by five one five one inverse as we know poly eigen function gives you uh, identity two identity so one minus five one minus five two identity matrix minus five one minus five two that are the inputs in poly eigen gives you five one and you need to check if the inverse is less than one or not so 1 minus 5 1 minus 5 2 very simple poly um, and when you do that we need to see if the values are less than 1 or not if they are less than 1 if your RT gives you less than 1 then you have your stationarity condition satisfied right RT is the roots where the roots if your roots are less than 1 then stationarity is satisfied theta minus theta 3 minus theta 2 1 so poly eigen is used for var and roots are used for non-var that's all minus theta 3 minus theta 2 minus theta 1 minus theta 2 and 1 when they are not vars poly again is used for var okay and in case of var2 model again we look into the structure compute rules for all uh, see how to um, lag one lag equation variable, lag 1 equation on variable 1, lag 1 equation on variable 2, lag 1 equation on variable 3, lag 1 equation on variable 4, lag 2 equation on variable 1, lag 2 equation on variable 2, lag 2 equation on variable 3, lag 2 equation 1, variable 4. And we are talking about val 2. Right? That's how we identify. And then do poly again. And if there are more than that, you know, like var 4, 
beautiful like one equation on variable one like one equation on variable so this is the first structure second third fourth so kind of like indexing and you need to remember how many you need to trim and how many you want to keep and then we do poly again again to check for stationarity so this is a very easy problem and very interesting one as well okay so roots and absolute roots <coughs> there you go your problem for this one is also solved uh, which one was STSM roots let's take a small break okay now we are going to continue our uh, problems in chapter 13 and we did last we did stationarity properties of macroeconomic variable that was quite interesting problem as you can recall and now we're gonna move into number four and the question in number four uh, now the, uh, is hypothesis testing basically um, the problem in number four is ARMA models for macroeconomic variables the data file contains monthly macroeconomic data for the United States from January 1959 to December 1998 we want to use um, Newton Raphson um, algorithm to estimate an ARMA 11 model for the interest rate where it's ARMA 11 model well it was it is phi 1 yt minus 1 vt psi i vt minus i psi 1 vt minus 1 we want to do LR uh, wall and wall test for phi 1 0 and psi 1 0 now this is done on interest rate only we want to do this for annual percentage inflation and we want to do it for growth rate to see for which one uh, we have autoregressive parameters significant autoregressive parameters or significant moving average um, parameters so this is STSM ARMA let us just uh, move into the STSM ARMA mm, STSM ARMA as we see uh, here in this problem you are expected to have local functions uh, because we are gonna do uh, Newton Raphson algorithms obviously we need to do maximum likelihood estimation so I'll just jump into the local function to begin with so log likelihood function for an ARMA model right so are we familiar with log likelihood functions for ARMA models and have we studied that in our theories before um, I think we have all right this is recording well here we see log likelihood function for a joint uh, mm, for an Ar Varma mo Arma model you see uh, joint probability distribution function has a fixed and a factorial portion and uh, as we can recall as long as we have autoregressive parameter this can be simply estimated uh, with OLS and we don't need MLE but for the factorial portion we need MLE and the joint log likelihood function uh, looks like this whereas the conditional log likelihood function looks like this so in case on, of an ARMA 11 model our parameters are mu phi 1 psi 1 and sigma square v variance and the conditional log likelihood function with the maximum of lag order for both autoregressive and moving average parameter being 1 is 1 minus t, t minus 1 by t minus 1 half log twice pi half log sigma square minus 1 by 2 sigma square v then the whole equation right and uh, that is basically it or uh, we can write it as for i equals t minus 1 uh, or, or yeah we can we can actually represent as half log twice by sigma square and by t square the whole equation and the gradients are done for each parameter for mu for phi 1 for psi 1 and for sigma square right so ddu vt minus 1 psi 1 ddu vt minus 1 so yt minus 1 is added so these are the gradients 
and the we concentrate out our sigma square which is vt uh, multiplied to vt transpose or the residual square divided by t minus 1 so this should be our log likely our function <coughs> local function so neg log 1 function of uh, where parameter and y b and y size of y um, so uh, first of all the first function is we are here in r we are starting with mean log l is the mean of log l t and then let's make log l t well t is n row y n is n, n column y v e v and log likelihood function we need to with loop we need to find um, with loop we need to find our residual uh, structural residual and then log likelihood function the structural residual yeah, for structural residual we create zeros t rows and one one column so replicate a zero t times for log likelihood function zeros t minus one rows and one column because our time is t minus one from our uh, PDF equation as you can see t minus one is our time what t minus one basically t minus s is the actual equation um, and uh, t t minus s is the actual equation s is the maximum pq uh, value of p or q so t minus one so we will start with uh, t minus one rows and one column for log likelihood function replicate zero t minus one times so first loop over ma term obviously we have um, s plus one t equals s plus one in our log likelihood log likelihood function uh, before the log likelihood function you see s plus one so one plus one two time will start with two so i starts at two up until t residual is taking keeping u we take everything uh, i mean we represent the uh, our equation with u so we have y minus mu minus y1 y t minus 1 basically mm, what do we have is y minus mu because we we are representing our equation with structural uh, residual so y minus mu minus y y1 psi 1 vt minus 1 right y minus mu mu is located in b1 phi 1 y t minus 1 which is i psi 2 v t minus 1 uh, psi 1 v t minus 1 so mu phi 1 psi 1 okay and so that is v let's see how the loop is created for r for i in 2 to t for i in 2 to t v i y i y y mm, so y t minus phi 1 uh, mu 1 minus phi 1 y t minus 1 minus phi 2 y t v uh, psi, psi 1 v t minus 1 okay then to maintain the size we trim uh, v um, so that the dimension is a shift we trim v 1 0 because see it's a 1 1 process so we have to trim uh, because we are taking lag as well t minus 1 so and then mu sigma square v by t minus 1 remember sigma square v by t uh, v square b divided by t minus 1 was in the equation which was this v square divided by t minus 1 so v square is v transpose v divided by t minus 1 now this is loop over m a term uh, what about loop over uh, AR term uh, log likelihood function the log likelihood function is 1 to t minus 1 obviously because you might ask why t minus 1 why not 2 see t minus 1 so log likelihood function will start from 1 to t minus 1 uh, I in sequence t minus 1 half log twice pi half log sig uh, is determinant of v or uh, 
yeah half log to SVM and then half log sigma square or determinant of the variance covariance matrix minus 0.5 uh, which is V V transpose inverse of VC there will be a little tweak obviously column bind so omega VC is omega variance covariance matrix omega log to SVM minus half log determinant of omega V um, 0.5 vi inverse of omega v and column bind vi so and then the whole thing is uh, we take the mean whatever we have estimated here we take the mean of it and store it in f because our loop will return f and we can do it in two steps just that that is done in r so this is the function that function contains both the loop estimation of our uh, residual structure residual and log likelihood function now we can estimate our ARMA model and in ARMA we have first we start with our uh, inputting the data these are our data coming from the different variables obviously we need in R we need to read the table as, as matrix and uh, we need to choose the variable uh, first we need to for our first problem we just need interest rate so column bind r length of weight t b start initialization is point 0.1 once three rows one column why three rows uh, because you have three parameters obviously to understand more let's go back to my note mm, which is I think in 24 yeah we have three rows because you have three parameters mu phi and psi that we need to estimate we need to estimate three parameters so obviously three rows and one column very simple and then um, options of to large scale of display iteration we want to see all of it uh, was it one is being replicated three times because we are gonna get three parameters so <coughs> point one multiplied two replication it will happen three times optim so par is b start then neg log l which is the mean right mean neg log l by uh, y uh, neg log l y equals y method we have just hessian uh, we want hessian as well so theta value and hessian log l is minus log theta is minus a value which has been estimated um, minus a value is given to us I mean minus a value estimated and we see is inverse of 1 by t minus 1 inverse of hessian that is the omega or the variance covariance matrix known to us from very long time now let's do wall test in wall test we want uh, first we want to see if phi is 0 or not so we have three parameters uh, theta uh, phi and, and psi so phi is 0 and this is the equation or uh, known to us r theta minus q so what is r here where are we getting r from r is this um, lose my touch sometimes column bind uh, we are doing row bind first we are doing uh, 0 1 0 the this is we creating a column and we are doing row bind in rows r theta minus q inverse of r vc r transpose r theta minus q that is the equation of all test and we also do 1 minus p chi square 1 degrees of freedom or chi square distribution then moving average term is the last one being one very simple then joint now we want to do joint wall test so 0 1 0 0 0 1 see both are coming twice just like Granger causality joint so everything else remains the same one chi square cdf uh, okay something i don't want to miss in whenever i'm creating a matrix like this a matrix 
so combine 010001 first let it combine then mention that I want two rows and by row I want the time by rows right and I want to do row bind I want to do row bind of the combine 001 that's all r theta minus q r this is element by element or Hadamard kind of thing no this is matrix multiplication let's not make it more complicated okay and then likelihood ratio test is uh, log 1 0 is neg log l mean y 0 0 which is mu and the rest is 0 for y neg log l we are running the uh, we are calling the function that's all c mean of y so combining mean of y 0 0 and y we are calling the function and we are doing t2 minus 1 log 10 minus log l1 log l0 minus log l1 is luckily ratio test again chi square cd or chi square so this was stsm armor we did hypothesis testing uh, on an armor model um, armor model uh, and we used one variable at a time for the armor model just one single variable not multivariate um, and then the next problem that we are going to concentrate out is the Gauss Newton algorithm problem we are going to consider the ARMA11 model again show how the parameters of the model can be estimated using Gauss Newton algorithm so we are just trying to estimate Simul uh, so yet up until now one important ex uh, example we covered is that simulated we simulated many observations um, 100 observations uh, 200 observations and we simulated um, using parameter values and we did SCF and PSCF on our simulated data using the parameter values and then we also learned how to find stationarity on a given model and then we learned how to uh, estimate our parameters um, using uh, maximum likelihood estimation and test for the significance of autoregressive of moving average parameters then we are moving on to discussion on more estimation parameter estimation we can use these estimated parameters to simulate model with SF and PSF uh, and that kind of gives us some forecasting or predictive predictive predicting capacity as well so simulate an ARMA 11 model for 200 observation using the population parameters using the simulated data estimate the model using Gauss Newton where the starting values are chosen and sigma square v is concentrated out from the log likelihood function also estimate the asymptotic covariance matrix as well as the t statistics compare the maximum likelihood estimates that I had with the initial so we want to initialize with the given parameters and we want to compare maximum likelihood estimates then we want to do per, uh, perform LM uh, and world we want to do change the parameter estimates we try to initialize with zeros but we see that algorithm will fail if we want to do it with zeros it will not work so we can keep our mean zero but we cannot make our autoregressive and moving average parameter zero obviously that will make no sense um, if we do larger sample in this problem we see that the algorithm fails for larger samples sometimes because of the uh, I think the problem with initialization so this is Gauss algorithm uh, uh, problem STSM Gauss N so let's uh, do STSM Gauss N okay and in R2 okay starting with uh, there is no local function in this problem 
so because we have to uh, do some um, you know uh, simulation so we'll start with set seed random stream set global stream blah 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 and set seed one two three kind marsana twister we are familiar with this okay then starting values 40 is equal to 200 is given to us we include that sample size is given to us then mu phi psi uh, psi 1 and sigma square mu phi 1 psi 1 sigma square given to us obviously we need to discard the first 100 simulated observations we have to create extra 100 so our, our random number our we create vt um, or simulate vt structural residual with a random number t plus 101 row uh, T plus 101 rows, one column. T plus uh, random number or R norm. Random number or R norm. R norm T plus 101 rows and one column. We'll discard the first 100 rows. Uh, first 100 observations. Right? 101 because we have autoregressive and autoregressive parameters. That's why. Then we do RxRR. And we're familiar with RxRR because in uh, RxRR, we first have what in first we have exogenous variable which is the element starting from VT which is the moving average element starting values initialization then lag parameters right so we are doing STSM Gaussian okay so mu plus trim R VT uh, 1 0 0 1 psi 1 trimmer vt01 obviously because 1 1 um, first row and the last row uh, vt01 uh, you remember i told you once that that goes up like blocks 1 0 then goes up 1 <coughs> initially 0 5 1 right uh, so generally we start trimming from the first row end up trimming the last row you can remember in in that manner too rex rr first let's column bind mu plus uh trimmer v10 trimmer v01 so we want to do column bind right we want to do this for column bind then column bind 00, zero then column bind 51 So basically we want all of them in one column we don't want to have multiple columns here just to be sure we were doing column bind and then trimmer yt hundred zero whatever we estimated we want to first trim the first trim the first hundred observations so from vt we have estimated our yt uh, and gauss newton now algorithm we need to start with a convergence criteria which is something like that and maximum of iteration is set for us in this process before we move further we are need to remember a few things um, let's go back to our writing yeah written code now you see in this written code there is some additional information Remember, in Gauss Newton is used for nonlinear function. Yt is beta naught, beta one, yt beta two plus ut. Well, these were the estimated parameters. Where ut was yt minus beta naught minus beta one, yt beta two. Z one t is dd ut by beta naught, which was one. Then yt beta two. We had yt multiplied to beta two. Um, beta 1 and uh, d d u t divide uh, 4 beta e equals beta 1 y t beta 2 log of y t okay so this one uh, y, uh, beta 1 y t beta 2 so y t beta 2 beta 1 y t two beta 2 log of y t these were our z elements so in this problem we have z1t z2t and z3t z1t is once length of vt1 zero 
Rex Auror again Initia versus Exogenous Variable 0 and Theta 3. Why Theta 3? Because Theta 1, Theta 2 and Theta 3. <coughs> In this problem we have Arma 1, 1. In Theta 3 mu phi 1 we have psi uh, no we have phi in theta 3 right we have uh, moving over each parameter in theta 3 which is phi 1 well that depends how I represent my thetas it really doesn't matter because all the thetas give us the same initial value however this is basically phi uh, um, this is basically autoregressive parameter Z2T is stream R uh, YT 0 1 so there is no ones because there is no ones Z2T is YT 0 1 nothing is so YT minus 1 basically uh, YT minus 1 0 0 and theta 3 and Z3T so Z Z one T was on exogenous portion, Z two T was on this equation, right? Uh, in in our equation, Z two T was on y t minus one. <coughs> in this current problem that we are dealing with, Z two T was phi one, y t minus one. So basically zero one. Um, Z three T is on V, so trimmer V T zero one. 0 0 trimmer vt 0 1 is psi psi is 0 0 0 minus theta 3 mm, 0 0 trimmer vt 0 1 this is so this is exogenous 0 0 and three mark zero zero meaning will start with zeros and then the next is v t zero one z one t z two t because beta one uh, y t b log y t so because uh, this is the element thing so let's go back so you see v t is three mark y t one theta two zero so exogenous first exogenous and we are mentioning our moving average parameters as theta 1 and theta 2 so phi is theta 3 so critical value uh, i equals 1 while i is equal to maximum number i up until maximum number of iteration uh, z1 t we are doing column bind on the whole thing to add to our problems indeed column bind replicate one length of vt1 so z1t is ones as we have seen zero and set of three z2t is where we have our coefficient phi so phi one yt minus one so it is zero one zero minus set of three column bind trimmer column bind z3 on the other hand is psi right psi parameter so trimmer vt 0 1 so we start with 0 the column will start with 0 because that is the place where we have our phi located right z3 will start with 0 and then it will go up until psi t minus 1 isn't it yes because vt this is the place of vt and then psi 1 vt minus 1 so you have ut phi 1 ut minus 1 vt psi 1 vt minus 1 0 0 minus theta 3 correct error column bind then we column bind z1 z2 z3 and then we remove vt and zt starting zeros we are removing starting zeros in all cases we have starting zeros we remove all starting zeros and display iteration the parameter vector then d theta is z by v right d theta is z t by v uh, which is again so 
we are regressing uh, because our process requires us to regress because the process suggests <coughs> after we find z then we regress mu on z uh, then regress mu on uh, z for all starting values of b the beta beta parameter you see this is what we learned from our nonlinear parameter estimation chapter um, regress mu on z1 t z2 t z3 t so we are regressing mu on z parameters as starting values for beta parameter we estimate beta then we regress our residual on z to get the changing parameter delta hat uh, for changing parameters and then we update our estimated parameter with the changing added together we have so this is the iteration this is part of the iteration that will continue and uh, so in our note we can see you can see first we regressing v on z uh, so we have del theta which is we are getting from regressing residual on z right <coughs> and so del theta and del theta transpose if that is less than critical value I mean if that has reached the critical if that is less than critical value then break we don't want to continue otherwise we continue to increase theta plus we uh, I mean update the parameter theta del theta if i equals maximum of iteration display failed to converge after iteration and and at the end i equals i plus one so that the process continues okay so very simple so if our del uh, our del theta is regression of structural residual on z we can write it as uh, column bind we are doing column the results are being column bind in columns bending in in say one vector we want the result in one vector del theta um, so linear model of regressing uh, residual on z minus one coefficient then we want to check for the convergence if uh, transpose of del theta multiplied to del theta is less than critical value then we don't want to continue same code else we want to have theta updated inside a uh, nested if if we reach maximum number of iteration if I reach just maximum number of iteration you send after if in R we do a first bracket concatenate and display failed after convergence maximum number of iteration display failed after convergence number to string maximum number of iteration we end it uh, and then we continue to upgrade our i right because it's going on uh, because it's a, a, a while loop our while loop we want our while loop to start from 1 and we will continue i plus 1 and while loop ends so at the end we have theta estimated theta oh we have estimated v we have estimated z and we have estimated del theta so using the v sigma square by t sigma square is vt transpose vt by t and variance covariance is sigma square inverse of zt zt transpose okay uh, how we are getting this indeed need to go back to our theoretical notation see covariance of beta is simply uh, beta hat by t so, so zt zt transpose divided by sigma square t so sigma square hat is equal to variance is mu square by t covariance is 
mu square by z t z t transpose hmm. so mu square by t sigma square is inverse of z t z t transpose multiplied to sigma square standard error is square root of diagonal variance covariance matrix so that is what we have found here then we do wall test lm and lr test so wall test is theta 3 uh, square divided by vc 3 3 uh, variance covariance matrix so this is basically mm, the fr coming from our equation of wall test coming from our equation of wall test we are getting this um, okay um before you move any further <coughs> for wall test we simply do um, phi square divided by omega uh, okay remember vc as a vector we are mentioning vc the whole thing as a vector representing whole thing as a vector good hmm. lm test now this is a two-step regression lm test first we need to find um, regressing um, first in first one we need to represent our residual with y minus x multiplied x by y x x square divided by y so first we do this regression first oh sorry the first regression of y on uh, x on y okay so three more y t zero y y on x y to one zero column bind replicate one length of y trimmer y t zero one um and take the residual second re regression is when the residual is regressed on um y t one zero residual u t e one zero y one one so three more by one wa zero one so in second regression again we're doing y on x but this time our exogenous variable size increases because we have residual included t one one wait e to zero one so y bsx one y minus mean of y and r squared 1 minus e squared divided by y square lm is y t multiplied to r square r t r square okay so first x on y then mu on y two regressions x on y first equation in terms of x on y then mu on y in terms of mu uh, i mean residual on y so first regression is on exogenous variable second regression is on the residual so generally what we do first we regress y on a constant and y t minus 1 to evaluate ut on restricted parameter and then we uh, regress ut yt on ut uh, to find r square generally we need to find z however in this case we are doing r square this is uh, the gauss newton algorithm is borrowed from nonlinear function equation that's why we faced a bit of difficulty because our criteria had to be updated simultaneously so there were some difficulties however it was fun indeed so that was Gaussian then the next problem is 
LM test for ARMA models, right? I think LM test for ARMA models will give you the similar. Uh, uh, this is the same problem as before, I guess. However, uh, let's see. Simulate t equals 200 observations using ARMA 11 model for exercise 5. Derive the following LM regression based test yt phi 1, yt minus 1, vt, yt mu, vt, psi 1, vt minus 1. Hence, show the equivalence of the two LM tests analytically and numerically using simulated data. Equivalence result. Then, singularity result. Use the simulated data to perform LM regression based test in the ARMA 11 model. Hence, show both analytically and numerically using simulated data that the test breaks down because of the singularity in the second stage regression. We'll see what they're talking about, STSM LM, in both case. So we have STSM LM here, and we have STSM LM, okay? Uh, we don't have any th uh, any local function so again just like before we start with seeding because we need some simulation then we estimate residual we do rex rr with rex rr we find y first hundred observations are discarded just like before nothing else then we want to do lm equivalent to show equivalence result so first re uh, regression of x on y or y on x basically y on x so replicate one by length of y and trim r v0 uh, replicate one for le length of y fine then the second regression is taking residual and obviously the size of exogenous variable now will increase residual v10 and replicate one length of y we do column bind of these to trim our v01 um, the last one the first starting with the first column ending in the uh, starting with the first row cutting off the first row at the end cut off the last row this goes up goes up like this <coughs> in blocks as we know then this is the residual just like before uh, where the residual is regressed y on x and y equals y minus mean of y r so r square with e and y so distance of y and i we do r square and do lm test or that is LM test for autoregressive one model, LM test for moving average one model. And in moving average, again, the first regression is as it is, no change. The second regression is, we are talking about V, now we are talking about in moving average, we are talking about residual U. Now we are talking about V, V is our residual E, uh, V is represented with E here. X minus y, y, x, x, trans. Same thing though, yeah. Y on x. Second regression is y on x. T minus 1 r square. Same thing. So basically, the difference between is first regression was um, in autoregressive parameter our residual was u in moving average is v so when we are regressing we are regressing e u on y and for r1 for ma1 we are regressing v on y in both the second case second regression okay our problem suggest that in second stage regression due to singularity the uh, second stage regression test will not work okay to demonstrate singularity result 
jointly we're doing jointly r and ma now when we do joint r and ma test first regression is as it is the last residual is v we take it and then once length of y1 y t01 v01 so y v01 this is as it is then yt01 y equals yt y01 and v01 right because phi1 yt minus 1 psi i vt minus i once phi1 vt uh, yt minus 1 psi1 vt minus 1 there is no space for e here because e is not needed e is the residual after the residual mm. v you see that is the difference here here and here only difference between ma and ar because we have two residuals we are using both of them residuals one for auto regression one for moving average they are the duplicate thing so second regression is yt01 uh, phi1 vt minus 1 psi1 vt minus 1 that's all and the correlation of at second stage the correlation we, we do a correlation of explanatory variables at second stage x rows these two phi and psi so correlation coefficient or simply core that's all so this was a pretty straightforward and simple problem we want to see they are very highly correlated that's the result should suggest so basically singularity suggests that if you use LM test for AR or MA or jointly generally you should have equivalent results okay it really doesn't matter that if you are doing LM test on AR uh, singularly or jointly I mean only on AR or joint AR you should have same result uh, but AR and MA test because are different just in terms of changing the residual that is the peak point we just need to remember when to change the residual that's all in exogenous variable that's all in second stage regression your exogenous variable enhances so these are the things we need to just remember and uh, that should end number six now we check a Varma model right this should be slightly interesting in a Varma model the question suggests um, we'll, we'll have multiple Varma model discussions I guess um, okay I think we can draw an end to the discussion for today and we can discuss Varma models further tomorrow. Thank you. Um, so I'm just going to stop here.